Tragedy has struck the family of YouTube's former CEO, and we are going to be covering the reactions. Yeah, obviously this is sad news, and I think that it relates to a situation that a lot of people across America are going through right now. Let's run the clip. The 19-year-old son of former YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki has died. According to authorities, Marco Troper, a freshman at UC Berkeley, was found dead inside his dorm room on Tuesday. His grandmother telling the San Francisco gate he died of an apparent overdose. It is unclear what kind of drug was involved. However, a UC Berkeley spokesperson confirms there were no signs of foul play. His grandmother says the family is devastated beyond comprehension. The son of former YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki has been found dead at the University of California with his family suspecting a drug overdose as the cause. 19-year-old Marco Troper, a freshman at UC Berkeley, was found unresponsive in the Clark Kerr student complex on Tuesday afternoon. The math major's grandmother, Esther Wojcicki, suggested he might have succumbed to a drug overdose after confirming his death and identity. Um, yeah, this is terrible news, but it's like, uh, actually relates to a trend that is happening in America right now. Obviously, RIP to Marco Troper, the son of Susan Wojcicki, uh, the former CEO of YouTube. Andrew, we actually saw her speak mm -hmm. one time at a YouTube conference for creators. Um, I just think that this is a trend right now and it's happening to a lot of people, almost regardless of socioeconomic status. Mm. You know what I mean? You have billionaire kids, millionaire kids middle class kids, lower middle class kids, and of course, lower class kids. And it seems like it's impacting everybody uh, equally. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about it. Uh, so yeah, let us know if you uh, like topics like this uh, as we cover them. But I guess I would say, David, is this considered a suicide or just a drug overdose? And is there a difference? Uh, I don't know, because I don't think that, you know, all the reports are out right now. I believe that a lot of people suspect that it's a uh, drug overdose, possibly fentanyl. Obviously, that's what has been the trend, mm. right? Right, right, right. That is what's trendy right now, as in that's a common drug. Right, right. But what they gets uh, cut into something else, right, that people are not expecting right but I, I guess what what's i mean you know this does happen to all types of kids all over the world especially in america obviously we talk about the suicide rate in asia especially like south korea japan uh primarily but i guess like why is this big news is it because she's a rich and famous person you know her net worth is 800 million obviously rich families are actually not uh devoid of this tragedy this right. happens and amongst are, rich people and, and, all the time and you can also argue that rich private school kids andrew they might even do more drugs right and it i think it's regardless of like upbringing look at uh hunter biden look at donald trump jr ray Pretty, dalio's right. son um obviously we could go down the list of celebrities kids who have actually had substance abuse problems and even suicide so i guess it really can happen to anybody but it seems like even that there are statistics that show even amongst the richer neighborhoods, it even happens more often. Right. Uh, I think there's more heavy drug use because the kids may have the liquidity or the, the money. The access and to And the it. access, because it's a lot of things, it's like there's the desire to do something, but there's also the capacity and the access. Like you said, also you need the capital. Um, I think the internet reaction shows a few things though. You know, obviously there is the typical like outpour of sympathy for somebody that, you know, was the CEO of a product that everybody used for a number of years, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, she was CEO since 2014, Andrew. That's like how long we've been on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, but there's other people being like, oh, they deserved it. And, you know, I mean, the internet is going to have so many reactions. To yeah, the internet's like never going to be kind about this kind of thing. No, 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 no. The internet comments, the internet is savage. Right, it right, right, is. right, right. So anyway, let's just get into the comments section. Like we said, RIP, uh, I hopefully... You know, us doing this video is really to hopefully, like, people can actually take something away from this rather than the emotional reactions one way or the other. Um, somebody said, you know, the grandmother, who was actually an author, the grandmother, uh, who is the mother of Susan Wojcicki, um, she said, you know, one thing we know is right now is that it was drugs involved. Right. Like, that's all we know right now. She actually wrote a book saying how to raise successful people because she had three daughters that were really successful. Mm. One of them was married to Sergey Brin, who founded Google. And who ended up, she ended up founding... 23andMe. Right. So she she did do stuff on her own. Basically, she had a bunch of billionaire daughters. You okay. know what I mean? Like, when, one through one way or another. 
and they they were powerhouses. Right. Um. Do you think it's true though that that doesn't necessarily mean those powerhouses kids will be in the same situation? Because me, we, me, and you know, Andrew, we have immigrant parents. Who's to say that our kids wouldn't be more likely to engage? in more hyper American dopamine chasing activities than we would be because we're still so close to that first generation struggle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's tough because as a, as a parent, you know, I think you've, I bet there's a lot of cases where uh, parents feel like they've done everything right. Treated that kid with respect, showed him the right path. Obviously giving them everything, yeah, right? Giving them everything you possibly can in the world, but then they still choose to abuse drugs or get down into the wrong path and get into um an emotional hole that they can't get out of so um i do think i bet now i don't have the stats for this but i would assume that children of immigrants have a lower suicide rate i would just bet it because you grow up in a family where you uh maybe have somewhat of a mission built in not every kid feels like this i'm sure there's cases that you know i do know of some cases where it's happened regardless but i guess like the rate might be lower just because you feel like you have a a mission in life to be i don't know like you said i think the situation and what motivates you and what your parents teach you growing up is completely different yeah i mean because because uh i will say this though to play devil's advocate, I've seen some immigrant kids, Andrew, actually uh, possibly commit suicide due to too much pressure versus the lack of mission. Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it happens in all ways. See, I guess the truth is, man, it can kind of happen to anybody. Not and, to like and, and scare for, it. And for different reasons, Yeah, too. not to scare people, but it, but it, it does happen to all different Somebody types said of it's so crazy how privileged these kids are. The first thing that they want to do is drugs. Somebody was saying... Uh, you know, some kids, they have everything. They have looks, they have money, they have access to systems and networks, and then they just throw it all away. And someone said, they're all hedonists. And uh, this is what happens when you're rich and you get everything you want. That kid probably never lifted a finger for work, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, you know, people are saying like, if you have a future of prosperity already predetermined, sometimes it's really easy to slip into like behaviors where you're like, well, just self-satisfaction is the only thing that matters. Yeah, yeah. I do know of a parent, a family, whose child told me, he's told me that his parents lied to him about how much money they had growing up. So they actually were doing pretty well as a family business growing up, but they kind of hid their wealth from the children in order to build in that work ethic. And it kind of worked for maybe like two out of three of the kids. But so it's not going to work three out of three. It's not going to build in that. You, you never know again. Um, one thing I've noticed is that every wealthy parent has a different approach. Like you said, some people try to recreate the struggle. Some people try to make their kids work at a menial job and work their way up the ladder to get some sense of it. Everybody has like a different approach, you know? Right, right, but it, right. I'll tell you this. It's very difficult to recreate something in a way that doesn't exist. Like if there's not a real fire behind somebody's butt, it's difficult to make them feel like there's a fire underneath mm-hmm. them and behind them, right? Um, other people are saying, Andrew, of course, the comments got political. This is the outcome of liberal policies on America brought down to a personal level. People are talking about mm. border control, precursors shipped over from China, all types of things. Uh, is this a legitimate debate to have when something like this happens to somebody high profile? <laughs> of course, there... Man, there I don't is think a domino it, I, effect, and there yeah, is, and there isn't. But then there's personal has, responsibility too. I don't think it has to do with the liberal policies as much, man. I think this is just a right wing person just trying to use this, right? Because uh, other people were like, "What? People didn't overdose of, on drugs like in the '70s and '80s, like in Miami during like cocaine oh, yeah. cowboys and all this stuff." Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Lots of, uh, yeah. It's always happened. Right, right, right. Um, of course, some people were in a way expressing some sort of like. Yeah, you know, because I disagreed with her politics and blah, 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 blah. And of course, you know, I think anything, anytime anything happens to somebody like ultra wealthy and ultra influential and ultra powerful, there is some sense of like, oh, like you thought you were so high and mighty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. I do think that what is tough, but I'm sure, I don't know if Susan's family really cares about this right now because this is probably the least of their concerns, but like, there are always going to be people who kind of want to see the rich fall. You, no matter if the rich is, is left or right, whether they're liberal or conservative, if they're just rich, 
People are going to look at them as opposition and be like, see, you guys don't have it all together. Even your kids can go into these emotional dark places and never come out of them. Right. And it's like, and you gave them everything. So you're wrong. You're clearly not a perfect person. You're not a perfect parent. Right, yeah. because what, in, in, in society, we sort of put these people on a pedestal. Yeah. Like, they did everything right. They're much stronger, like, game players than we yeah. are. So they're able to accumulate all this wealth I, I and assets. They, and like, I guess it comes down to, like, sometimes people feeling like, man, these self-righteous people always try to tell me how to live, try to give me advice. Mm. But they don't have it all together. No, it's true. I mean, th- and this it's is so a very, true. like we said, I think internet comments tend to show people's worst face though and in person people tend to be much more balanced generally mm. not always especially it depends on their state of mind mm-hmm. people were just talking about how come everybody is required to carry narcan they're trying to tell regular citizens andrew on the new york subway to carry narcan they're like narcan in every dorm room what is where are we at as a society in terms of normalized behavior if people are advertising that people need to carry this thing with them to to save somebody. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it is kind of weird. I mean, I think there's definitely a drug problem, and I think that the suicide rate is only just one symptom of it. Obviously, I think there's actually... I think there's actually worse problems than suicide that drugs create. Like, I think drugs, drugs in America, they create a lot of other even huger ma- macro problems. Well, but more like violence and stuff, Because right? I, Yeah, because I would say, you know, Jap- we all know Japan and South Korea, they have no drugs, like no hard drugs. Very, very hard to get hard drugs. So the Extremely drug- hard, yeah. So when it comes to like suicide or drug overdose or accidental drug overdose in that country, well, I meant suicide from drug overdose is low. But suicide in itself is very high. Well, because they have a completely different society with right. a lot of uh, uh, really, really heavy buy-in culture. Yeah, a lot of pressure and a lot of shame in that culture. So no matter what culture you have, there's going to be sadness, right? And there's going to be this. So I don't, I'm not saying you can stop it completely. No one can. But you can only like, you know, I mean, what could that family have done? I guess like... Did they see any warning signs? Did they try to get him therapy? Sometimes right. the answer is that he he had all these expectations. Maybe he only went to, honestly, as crazy as it sounds, he only went to UC Berkeley for his family. That might have not been good enough. Right. And maybe it's kind of crazy to say this. And like I said, RIP to him. Like, I'm not making light of this at all. But it's like almost like, what if he was a different type of thrill seeker where he was doing like, a, uh, uh, you know, building jumping or like uh, hand gliding, and then there was an accident, and he passed doing like extreme skiing or something like right, that. Right. Would that be perceived differently? Because you're still on a dopamine chase that you can't get from like, I guess like a regular lifestyle. I don't know. That's a good like, point. I mean, because you know what I'm saying? Like, how would it be perceived? Like, what, I guess is your college student child dying? Period. Is that a failure if they died doing something? risky and surfing in these hard waters because that's their passion or if they die overdosing from drugs obviously it is perceived differently but at the end of the day they're still going too soon you know what i mean so i guess it's still volatile behaviors but in different ways like the the (laughs) problem the the probabilities in both of those like lifestyle lanes is not that good but completely perceived differently right like we said guys um, risky behavior, but for different reasons. Yes, yes. Right? RIP. And man, you know, the reason that we covered this, it was not to, you know what I mean? It's a tragedy, but we just wanted to cover it because it's going viral right now because it's high profile, but it's relating to something that's like a lot of people are going through at the moment. Yeah. So I, I guess, I guess uh, anybody out there in the comments down below, like, what would you say the simplest? I mean, there's no simple solution to this, but I guess a lot of people in the comments I've seen are like, just don't do drugs. That is number one. Don't get hooked on drugs. And if you do, that is going to put you in a really bad position, right? But obviously, like we said, people can die many different ways out there. So anyways, you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, and until next time, we out. Peace.